Good morning. This is Kathy from Crowder's Mountain, North Carolina. I hope you're all doing well today. And I want to tell you that if you enjoy painting barn quilts as much as I do, you're going to love this one. It's called a circle of fish. And whether you've painted a hundred barn quilts or this is your first one, you can do it. This is not too hard. Believe me. Now the way I teach these videos I block as many things off as I can I I work in blocks to me that's just an easier way of explaining where to make your marks at so that's that's the way I do it other people can use protractors and measurements and measure that here I, I'm not doing that because it, it gets too confusing for me to explain I can do it if I'm here by myself but this just seems to me to be the easiest way, and I hope you all enjoy it and can follow along with me and make your own barn quilt. Again, this is Circle of Fish, so let's get started with that pattern. I'm going to do this one the same way that I did the other video. Part one, I show you the finished product, and I'm going to show you how to draw the pattern. And then in part two, I'll show you the exact same colors or the exact colors that I used. And I have a little thing that I want to show you too about where I keep my paint and these bottles and things. People have asked me about that. So I just want to throw that little clip in there. But I'll, I'll tell you the name of the colors. Not that you have to paint yours the same exact color as mine, but I'll tell you the exact name of the colors that I used. So let's get started and one other thing I started off thinking I was going to make speckle trout and I even, may have even mentioned that in the last video but look at it I didn't want to mess it up so I'm calling it rainbow trout which is a thing <laughs> so Let's get started drawing our rainbow trout. Okay, what I've done, ah, I taped my yardstick down. <laughs> Look at that. Christ is alive. And I'm trying to get y'all to hit subscribe and join the fun, and I'm taping the yardstick down to the cloth. Okay, <laughs> what I tried to say was that I cut a piece of graph paper the same size as a 24-inch board, okay? <laughs> that shouldn't have been that hard to say. So what we need to do is mark it off. And we're going to mark every two inches. Now, if you've got the graph paper, you know where every two inches is. But for those who are drawing on your board, you just lay your yardstick or your 24-inch ruler down. And we're just going to mark every two inches. We're going to make a little tick mark. And for those of you who already know what I'm going to do next, you can fast forward. But I want to make sure other folks know too. So these videos can be for beginners and intermediate. And I, I've got some advanced. I think I've got some advanced patterns on here too. If not, I can do that. Oh, um, got several in my mind that I want to do, but if you have any that you would like me to draw off for you, just let me know and we can, we can do that. Okay, I'm just drawing on, making tick marks every two inches all the way around my paper and you're going to make two inches all the way around your board 
unless you're going to make a pattern first and you've got some of this paper. And even if your paper don't have lines, it doesn't matter. Just mark off 24 inches on your paper, 24 inches horizontally and vertically, and, and cut it out. And it'll be just like that 24 inch board. Okay, now see we got it all the way around. I'm drawing my tick marks. I'm just connecting the dots here. I'm connecting from one tick mark to the next. I'll get you up here where you can see. See, I went all the way around with my tick marks, and all I'm doing now is connecting them. a little bit. I want to make sure you get it. And like I said earlier, if you already know how to do this part, you can fast forward. But someday soon, I will have Adobe Pro. I said I would give myself a present when I got to a thousand subscribers and buy myself some Adobe Pro which they say is the best editing software so I have you guys some music going on here bells ringing and clicking and be more exciting okay now I just flip my paper around And I'm drawing my lines vertically now. See, it would have been vertically if I had left it this way. That's my horizontal lines, and now I'm drawing the vertical lines. I just am a short person, so I have to I have to do it the way I can reach it. I'm standing on something back here already. Y'all seen do something. <laughs> I'm almost finished. I'd tell you a big old whopping tail, but I'd get confused. I'd be telling two stories at once. Okay, here you go. All right, now let's get back on my little line here. Now, we've got our grid, two inches wide, 12 blocks horizontally and 12 blocks vertically. So that is our grid. We've got 144 blocks on here, 12 by 12. And sometime when you're um, reading a, a description, they'll say it's 144 block barn quilt. Well, that's, all that means is it's 12 by 12, 12 um, blocks up and 12 blocks down. Uh, 12 blocks across and 12 blocks up. Now, this is a 24 by 24, 24 inch by 24. 
If you wanted to draw a 36 inch barn quilt, then you would need your blocks to be three. You need 12 blocks. So, and 12 into 36 is three inches. So that's what you're gonna need, your blocks to be three inches. If you're gonna draw a 48 inch, like a four by four, which would be beautiful, that will, on that one you would need four inch blocks. You still need 12 blocks, but they'd be four inches. So it's, uh, the math's not hard. I don't allow hard math in my basement. Like, I got a sign that says no algebra allowed. Okay. Let me find my ruler again. All right, now, if you, you saw the picture, so you noticed that we had our corners blocked off. So you're gonna go over three, and then you're gonna go up three. Over three, and up three. And we're just gonna go from that one corner, the top, you see what I did? We're just blocking off our corners at our third blocks. the old hand in a way on that one, didn't I? Okay. Now, we've got our four uh, corners blocked off. Now let's take, um, let's take our red pen and we're going to start drawing our pattern. Of course, that's part of the pattern, but you know what I'm talking about. It's going to be, we're going to start drawing the fish. So, what we want to do is find the middle, the center of our board. So, we know it's 12 by 12, so we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the center of our board. And that's where we're going to start working from. All right, we need like 12 inches here. So that, you know, that's the blocks are two inches wide and we need six blocks. So from the center, we go out three in both directions. So we've got our six. And I'm not so sure how you're seeing that, but up three and out three. Let me do that one again. Kind of hard to see on that black. There you go. There you go. Can you see that? So it's six, uh, six across and six up, right in, from the center. All right, now, to make our lines, we need to count over one, two, three, four, and make a tick mark. I'm going to do the same way on this corner. One, two, three, four, and make a tick mark. Now let's go to the next corners. One, two, three, four, and make a tick mark. One, two, three, four, and make a tick mark. You see what we're doing? At every, we're going every side of the board, we're counting over one, two, three, four, and making a tick mark. One, two, three, four, tick mark. And I think we need, we got those here. I flipped it around too fast, didn't I? One, two, three, four, tick mark. One, two, three, four, tick mark. So we've got here, 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 here. I'll do it that way. Can't okay, even see long tick mark. Right there. And then these two. So one, two, three, four tick mark at, at every angle from here, there. So 
So you see what I did? One, two, three, four, tick mark at the top of four. One, two, three, four, tick mark at the top of four. Go to the next side of the board and do the same thing. The next side of the board and do the same thing. The next side of the board and do the same thing. So now, we're, going, we're just for the sake of this demonstration and for the sake of me explaining it to you, I'm going to call this one our first one. So I'll always come back to that one when I'm explaining it to you. All right, so let's take our either, you know, if you've got a yardstick, you can use the yardstick. I'm using a two-foot ruler. And this is my center, remember? So I'm going to go up to that tick mark at the top. I'm going to find the one at the bottom. And I'm going to make a diagonal line. But I'm going to make sure my line crosses the center point. It's kind of hard to do with these big fat... Uh, markers, but you'll be using the paint, uh, the heat erasable pens or pencil, something that you can get rid of the marks with. Yeah, I think I told you in the last video I found some erasable colored pencils. Well, they didn't work, and I want to tell you that. I'm glad I've thought about it. They did not come off of my barn quilt. I raced and raced, and it just would not come off. So I won't be using them. But now, they'll erase on paper, I guess, but they just not wood. So I'm not going to say anything bad about them. They're beautiful colors. All right, I'm just going from one tick mark to the another one now. All right, you see it? I think I got them all. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to one. Let's go back to one here. Then we're going to go from, from one, we're going to go up three. I'm going to make this line kind of fat so you can see it. Going up three. And from from that end of that line, in three. So we're going to do that on all four of our corners. have four places that you're doing this. See that? I think you could see that pretty good. All right, then the next step, let's go back to one. So don't confuse you. Let's go back to one. Remember this line that we made down here? What we're doing now is connecting that tick mark at one up to that line. And then from that line down to the tick mark to the left. So we'll do it again. On all four sides, we're going from that tick mark to the end of our line. From the end of our line back to that tick mark on the left. Tick mark up to the line, down to the tick mark on the left. One more time. There you go. There you go. Now look, we're starting to draw our fish. But now notice we don't have the lines in here. 
or here. So what we want to do, and you can take your yardstick or whatever you have your marking with and just draw that line coming down through the center. We'll make, you see, you've got to make sure your lines are passing through that center or your fish will look like somebody's caught them on the hook 40 time, 47 times. Alright, see there? Look. We've got our fish. Do you see the fish? Look. There's one. There's one. Oh, here's a fish. We've got eight fish. Now let me show you how to make his little fins. And I'm wondering if I should make them in another color so you could see them better. Let me get this blue. I believe it'll show up pretty good. Alright, now this was the part that was harder for me to get into my brain than any of this. But it was not really hard. It, I don't know why. It just Some things just don't want to go in there. I think I was... I don't know what I was thinking. I, I just thought that I couldn't get them perfect and I couldn't do it. But I did it. And here's how. It's just so simple. And you're going to say, well, Kathy, what was you worried about that for? Well, because it wouldn't go in my brain. But watch this. Here's one fin, and we're going to make this fin all the way around and come back and make the second fin because it is just a little bit different. All right, so we're going to go over five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're just going to go from the top of that fifth block down to the bottom. We're just making a diagonal line. And then all we have to do is draw a line from the top of the second block down to the bottom. So you see that thin? I probably could draw it in and you could see it a little bit better. Wait a minute. I think this might help. All right, let me show you this one. All right, for that one, one, two, three, four, five, this one's one, two, three, four, five, and instead of going the same diagonal uh, from the top right to the bottom left, we're going from the top left to the bottom right, like that. And Marking from the top, the top of that second block down. Now, now let me show you. You can probably see it better if I just kind of color it in a little bit. See that fin? See that fin? That made more sense, didn't it? Now, I'm going to go all the way around doing that. And those those fins are on the inside here so you don't have to worry about the fins on the outside the left hand side of the fish right now well some of them are left never mind don't don't put that in your brain just don't worry about these blocks right here all right you see what i did count it over one two three four five down one two three four five down and then I took these two blocks and I'm connecting, I'm connecting this line to the bottom. See that? One, two, three, four, five. Or you could just say I'm going right here to this, this corner of the fish and going down. You see? Just go to this corner of your fish. This was number one that we didn't start on again, did we? 
Okay. All right, see? And did I forget to draw my lines on the other one? Let's color in number one. Sometimes I've taken my patterns and just taken these colored pencils and draw them. Just shaded it in just so I can kind of get a feel about what color I want to put. All right, now so we've got, I'm not sure I did that. Do it so it doesn't confuse anybody. All right, now we're back at number one. And I'll show you how I made that other fin. Okay, look at your ruler and put the 12 mark right in the center of that tick mark here. These four blocks, put it right in the center and then go down, put it in the center and then go down to the end of that line, end of this line. And that's where I measured it and I put a mark there. So you see my ruler? I put a mark. So now I'm going to put that same mark right in the middle of that line where all that intersects at. I'm going to the end and draw back in. Alright, and now you're going to count up one, two, three, and in the middle of that third block to the left, that's where you want your tick mark. And then you're just going to connect it. And that made that thin. Now, the reason it was so hard is because I kept wanting to go to, to uh, the end of a block. Y'all can see that. I kept wanting to go to the end of a block and then it would, it would just mess up the look of it. So you can't, you can't really do it that way. Those, this line and that line has to be the same size, same length. So, for the one over on the left, I put the 12 right into the center and draw over to my line. Now that's, that's the way I did it. And then I went back to the middle of this third one. The middle of the third one and drew from that down. So I've got that one. That set of fins. Alright, we'll do it again. I put that mark in the middle where all those blocks intersect. And I drew from my t the end of the ruler. camera cut off and I don't know where it stopped so I'm hoping I got enough footage on here that you saw what I was doing but look at these fins in case it stopped I made a mark I measured but at the 12 inch mark right in the intersection of these four blocks I, I went down to the end of my block and made a mark so then I took that mark and put it right back into that intersection. And I went from the end of the ruler into the middle, that intersection. And then I counted up one, two, three, and made a tick mark right in the middle of that third block on the left and connected it. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here now I could put my mark here and draw to the end of that line, go up to my the middle of the third block and connect it. And you see that you have, see, you can see the fins. So 
so I'm not sure that you saw that was our number one block and I did it and colored that in so I'm not sure where that camera stopped at all right so we're gonna go all the way around now, I started this way let's just keep going Where's my line? Here's my line. And I'm going to the middle of the third block. And over here, I could either switch that around like that and put that line here and go out, or I can just put the 12 right in that intersection of those four blocks and draw out to my line which seems like that's easier. Okay. Two more little fins and we've got our fish drawn. So here's my mark. Into the 12. Here's the middle of that third block. Down. I put my 12 right here in that intersection and drew out to my line and then drew from the middle of the third block down. So you see, when you're drawing it, it's the third block, you draw all the way to the left-hand side. But over here, it's the third block, and you're gonna draw to the right. See that? That's our fish except for his little eyeballs and we'll put those on at the end because we're gonna we're gonna be painting all that so that is the end of part one and i hope i hope i didn't confuse you too much and remember i'm still having this surgery stuff on my mouth so if you didn't understand something that i said please put it down in the comment section and ask me what I meant. It will not hurt my feelings at all. I just did not want to stop doing my videos. I wanted to keep going with them, but uh, the next surgery is not until November. So, it, you know, I've been out not making videos for almost a year if I had waited. So hopefully you guys have empathy on somebody that can't speak plain right now so i appreciate it thank you all hope you enjoyed this hope you subscribe and click the bell and stay tuned for part two where i show you the paint colors and how to paint it see you guys later bye